in Toggleville Obstetrics, page 68. In this page, this is the mechanism of labor for any diameter. So anything entering the pelvis as a diameter has to enter in the oblique diameter of the inlet or the transverse diameter, but mainly in the oblique diameter. But to exit the pelvis, it has to exit the pelvis in the anteroposterior diameter of the outlet. This means that inside the pelvis, it has to rotate. And any diameter which is entering the pelvis has two points, a yellow point and an orange point, an occipital, brigmatic, a bi-trochanteric, it doesn't matter. The name doesn't matter. So this diameter entering the pelvis is a yellow-orange diameter. So the yellow-orange diameter will enter the pelvis in the oblique diameter. And to exit, it has to exit in the anteroposterior. So it has to rotate while it is in the pelvis. And rotation, which is anterior, has to stop in the midline at the symphysis pubis. This anterior direction of rotation is dictated by the shape of the pelvic floor as explained in the previous pages. So if point, the yellow point, the posterior point will rotate, it will rotate 3 8 of a circle. It will rotate 1 8 to come in the transverse plane, 1 8 in the opposite oblique, 1 8 and then it stops. So this is 3 8 of a circle. If the anterior point meets the pelvic floor and rotates, it will rotate just one eighth of a circle. In any case, if it is point, orange point or yellow point, if it is the anterior point or the posterior point, it will rotate. And now the diameter is in the anteroposterior diameter of the pelvis. Now we come to a very important point, which is the exiting of the pelvis, the delivery itself. To exit the pelvis, the point which is under the symphysis pubis will hinge and the posterior point will deliver first, then the anterior point. So what happens is that the yellow point which is here in this example, the point under the symphysis pubis will hinge under the symphysis pubis. And the orange point will deliver first. So if you apply this to a diameter, let's say the bitrochanteric diameter, we have an anterior trochanter and posterior trochanter. So the bitrochanteric diameter will enter the pelvis in the oblique diameter of the inlet. The posterior trochanter, if it meets the pelvic floor, it will rotate 3 eighths of a circle. While the anterior trochanter, if, it's, if it meets the pelvic floor, it will rotate 1 eighth of a circle. The trochanter which rotated will hinge under the symphysis pubis with delivery of the posterior buttock first and then by straightening of the spine, the anterior buttock will deliver. If we put this to the normal suboccipital brigmatic diameter, in a normal occipital anterior position, the suboccipital brigmatic diameter will enter the pelvis in the oblique diameter. The occiput, which is anterior, will meet the pelvic floor first, rotate one eighth of a circle. The occiput comes under the symphysis pubis, it hinges, and the face delivers by extension of the head. So for all malpresentations or even the normal, if you are reading through the mechanism of labor, this does not mean that every time you are reading a different mechanism. They are all the same thing. The diameter will enter the pelvis in the oblique diameter. And then after entry, the anterior point will meet the pelvic floor. It will rotate one eighth of a circle or the posterior point will meet the pelvic floor and rotate three eighths of a circle. And then the delivery will be that the anterior point will hinge, the posterior point will deliver and then the anterior point. This means that the problems in the mechanism of labor can be either the presenting part cannot enter the pelvis or it cannot rotate or it cannot exit. A perfect example of not being able to enter the pelvis is cases of cephalopelvic disproportion. Or in malpresentations, the, the main example will be the brow presentation. Because the brow, the diameter is too large to enter the pelvis. Or it can enter the pelvis and cannot rotate in order to bring the diameter in the anthroposterior diameter of the outlet. And the perfect example of this is in cases of persistent occipital posterior or it rotates a little bit and cannot complete the rotation cycle like in the deep transverse arrest in face as well a or it can rotate 
But when it comes in the anthropocyte diameter, it cannot deliver. In other words, it cannot follow the axis of the pelvis. A good example is if we have a contracted outlet. Or in malpresentations, a good example is mento posterior. If it rotates and becomes a direct mento posterior, and the one which uh, the, the bregma or the, uh, the sense put hinges under the simsis pubes, it cannot extend further to deliver the face. So we have three problems in the mechanism, three main problems. Failure of descent, failure of rotation, failure of delivery. Okay, I hope this makes things easier. That's why I put this page, page 68 in Togeville Obstetrics.